revegetation project here in Mora. Um, we've been here since late 2007, so 11 years now. We came from England, myself and my partner came from sunny Dorset to sunny as hell Mora. Um, it was definitely a, uh, a shock to see <laughs> how hot it gets in the summer and the different soil type. Obviously the soil here is, is clay but you you know only over the road is, is like beach sand so I've had to learn how to kind of garden in this soil type. Um, when we first got here these we had two big paddocks and they only had uh, a sprinkling of I don't know what they planted some random stuff um, and a and a old York gum so once we bought the property uh, in 2009 I think it was yeah mid 2009 uh, we started to put some vegetation back because it was just so bare and and it was really windblown and really hot in the summer because there's obviously just nothing covering the soil so through my job because I'm a land care officer I've been doing it since uh, early 2008 so through my job and through the knowledge I've um, gained and my network of people that always know more than me on, on plants and what plants to plant where and, and when to plant and how to plant I started uh, putting trees in in uh, in 2000 and yeah 2000 winter 2009 so I started with a few York gums just a few I think there was a dozen and they worked really well so the following year and, and 2011 we really went to town on planting a lot of different species uh, just just I got um, my local planting contractor to do me some rip lines and just planted into them and I think it was a really good winter because we had a really good establishment and yeah and I look at the trees now and I think oh my god I can't believe that they were never here before they're just magnificent like this um, uh, salmon gum here is just oh, it's amazing it's absolutely full of buds it's gonna flower soon and it's just bird food it's insect food it's wind relief and and it's cooling the soil so it's, it's not so hot it's like it's like nature's air conditioning so haven't really looked back here's a few of the species i've got some melaleucas here i think that's uh probably vimineer excellent species to plant gets covered in white flowers and, and the bees love it this is one of the brushwoods, quite slow growing. This is a she oak or a casserina, which make a fabulous windbreak tree. And they sound very nice in the wind and grow just, just everywhere, especially in wet spots. This is um, Melaleuca thioides, which is commonly known as salt buster, which people plant on just the worst salt sites and it just once it gets going, it just goes crazy, but it's quite a slow grow to start with. This is Old Man Saltbush, which is again an excellent plant. It doesn't have to be on saline land, but it makes it an, an excellent hedging plant. And it will just, you know, you can chop it back and it would come back. And also, obviously, you can eat the leaves. They're a, a bush, bush tucker food, really good for you, good for sheep. And I've got some gum trees. This is um, this is a um, a lemon mallee, which I can't remember the name. Well, both would, uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, um, just oh my god, just amazing flowers and very long flowering as well. Amazing. Another she oak. Then we got some salmon gums, of course, which is an iconic tree of. Mora and just trying to put some back because they're all just getting chopped down. And this one here, this is this is this went crazy. This is um, Melaleuca huglii, which you often find out at the coast, but and oh, I can't remember why I planted it, but wow, it's done fantastic on clay. So you can see some species are just adapt to many soil types so you just want to check the label or check with the nursery but this is oh my god this is an amazing plant 
the smell from the flowers is is honey like because that's why it's called a honey myrtle but it's just oh the butterflies just came from miles just amazing like that you can trim it back this is quite big this one this is our uh, kind of hedge windbreak that I've this is the first kind of project part of the whole operation and this is a lemon flowering eucalypt which again has the most magnificent flowers and it's just got so tall over even the past couple of years just amazing and these big silvery leaves and then you know, all these pods will be amazing yellow flowers soon and just be covered in bird my tips would be if you're thinking about doing a revegetation project know know your know your site like know your soil know your climate know which way your wind's coming um, know which local species are going to work best for your area because natives are always going to work better than than things that need irrigation I, I've got the odd bougainvillea and I've got a jacaranda or two and you know non, a few non-natives but they've got a place but it's predominantly uh, uh, a mix of natives and I've made sure we've put uh, the big tall trees in I've got like the shrubs um, lots of melaleucas that kind of balloon out I've got smaller shrubs like the salt bushes um, I mean the ground cover we get annual weeds and everything which is fine so yeah mostly just the trees and, and the shrubs and there's, there's a lot of things um, we're trying to put infill but sometimes they don't work once the trees get established so you really want to kind of put in as much as you can at that first planting before you get the competition from the other trees but yeah no really pleased with the whole project and just uh, it's like a jungle, just a totally different place than when we first moved here and just wish they'd probably never cleared it in the first place, to be honest. Mm -hmm.